Hello, my front end friends. This might seem like a good idea because it makes nice responsive text, but please never ever declare a font size using a viewport unit, whether it's on your HTML, which might seem like it's a good idea because you get a responsive website or just using VW for font size in general is it's just a bad idea and you don't want to do it. And there's a couple of good reasons. One of them is just when you do this at very small sizes, your font sizes will get very small and at really big sizes, your font sizes will get gigantic and ridiculously big. And if you're using something like a wrapper to wrap your text, this can even become even more problematic because it's like limiting the size, but then your text continues to get bigger and it just gets really easy to run into overflows and strange layout issues and other things. Probably more importantly though, is this right here, which is the WCAG uh, success criterion and if we do this we're actually going to fail one of them so the WCAG here it has the success criterion 1.4.4 resized text where it says except for captions and images of text text can be resized without assistive technology up to 200% without the loss of content or functionality and let's check this out if we're on this site and you can tell I'm really zoomed in here on CodePen uh, when I zoom out I'm zooming out right now Notice, I mean, my my the layout is actually shifting. Let's turn off this wrapper here <laughs> just so we can see what's actually happening. Or even better, let's jump on over to the live view really fast here. And I'm zooming in and zooming out right now. And you can see a small shift, which is just my margins on the side that are changing, but the size of the font isn't changing. And the reason it isn't changing is because the font size is only looking at the size of the viewport. And when you zoom in and out, that doesn't change the size of your viewport. So. This fails your accessibility criterions and it's just a bad idea in general. And there's much better ways of doing responsive typography. So let's get rid of this guy right here because it's not doing anything that we actually want. Uh, and we go back to our, our boring old one with non-responsive text. And what I would suggest is if you want to have responsive text is you use clamp. So let's come here and we're going to do a font size. And so say, let's just say we want something like 5VW. You sort of like that size. It seems to be the size you want. It's growing and shrinking pretty well, except we run into this problem here where this is actually getting smaller than the text, like the paragraphs. And that's kind of awkward. So what we want to do here is do a clamp. And, and this, you know, comes into that idea that at small screen sizes, your text tends to get too small. And at large screen sizes, your text tends to get too big. So we can come in with this 5VW here, and then we want to set a, what's the smallest it can get to? Well, my text here is probably 1 to 1.25 rem. Right now it's 1. So let's just say this is actually a 2.5 is the smallest it can get to. And then over here, we can set the biggest it can get to, and maybe we want it to allow it to get really big. So now at the small sizes, it stays at a minimum of 2.5. As we're going this way, it's going to start growing, growing, growing. And then at one point it would hit that maximum and it would stop growing when we hit seven. So it will never be too small or never too big. There is a problem though, is in this middle zone, if I zoom in and out, your font size probably isn't going to change because we're still living in this squishy middle of this 5VW here. So it's best practice here to also include a fixed unit. So we can say something like plus 0.5 rem. So we're just saying like, this is sort of the base level we're at. And then the five VW is what it's going to scale at. So we still get that scaling coming in, but we just have a little bit of an extra here. And that means when we zoom in and out, it's hard to see right now, but while I'm zooming in and out, this 0.5 rem is actually changing. So it will have some scaling in there, though it will be pretty small, but at least this way we have a little bit of scaling happening. And when we hit the extremes of this, if we're zooming in or out, it will hit. And with big text like this, we're probably not too worried about it from an accessibility point of view anyway. It's generally on the smaller text where this is more important and you'll see it a lot more just because your font sizes are a bit smaller. So the viewport units will have a bit less of an effect on it. The problem with using viewport units though, especially if you're trying to get everything to scale properly is it's very magic numbery. And so if we come in here, like what clamps do I want here? I guess the smallest is one, maybe the biggest is a one point, I don't know, three, two, five. Let's go with that. Uh, 325 rem for the largest size. And what do we want to put in the middle? I don't know. <laughs> Let's, if I did the same thing, plus 0.5 rem, the problem is at, you know, my, they're not scaling at the same time because this range is so small. I probably actually want this to be this to be a lot smaller. Maybe I even want this to be smaller. Uh, and then I, I have to sort of hope for the best and then I play with it a bit and I see and then, oh no, it's not really kicking in for my paragraphs until I'm over here. And 
it's not easy. So what I'd actually suggest you do is head on over to, there's lots of tools for this, or there's several anyway, I don't know about lots, but there's a site called utopia.fyi, which I will include in the uh, description below. They have a whole bunch of good tools now. If you go over to the type tool here, you can come and set the width, the smallest width, we'll say 320. What's the base font size you're gonna have? So this is your body's font size. And so you can choose what the font size in pixels will be there and what the type scale will be. So what's the scale going from like your, you know, the, the base font size to the next biggest, to the next biggest, to the next biggest. And then when you're at a larger viewport, so what's the biggest size where things will stop growing at? What's the base font size there? And so let's just, to make it more extreme, I'm gonna do a 16 to 24. I would not do this in production, but for demo purposes, it highlights what's happening. And I'm gonna increase my type scale. So generally on smaller screens, you're gonna have smaller type scales. 1.2 is probably a good idea. At larger screens, your headings can be a lot bigger relative to the size of your paragraphs and other things. So you can come here and you can pump up your type scale a little bit. And what that's going to do is here, it's gonna generate a scale for you. Ooh, we even have, look at this. <laughs> I didn't know they included this. They're including it here. That's awesome. Uh, so here they're actually telling us that step three, four, and five fail. I've never seen this on their site before and I just talked about it. Look at that. That was, I guess, meant to be. <laughs> that based on the settings that I've put here, we actually have a few of them that are failing. And it says this often occurs when using dramatically different min-max type scales. Ah, so uh, I'm going to keep it anyway, again, just to highlight. But let's just see if I switch this down to a less dramatic growth factor and we go in, now we're not failing anymore. So that's cool that they've built that in. But I'm again, for demo purposes, we know that this would actually cause some issues. But here I have some CSS. We're gonna hit copy on that. We're gonna jump back on over to here and all the way at the top, it just gives us a bunch of custom properties that we can use. And our link right there. Uh, they do a step negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three. I tend to rename these like font size 100, 200, 300. I'm, I have a naming numbering system I use. But they've, they've done all the crazy math and to figure out all these things for us. So here we're just gonna say that the H1 is going to use my step five. So we come in with a var of step five, and then this one can be my var uh, step zero, I think would, a bit, would be the base one. Yeah, that looks right. And we also have an H2s in here. So let's do my H2 is a font size of var step four. It should be a pretty big size. You can see actually we have very big sizes coming in. Uh, but we have this maximum, that's a really big maximum at this size, uh, but they're all gonna scale together and at the same time. And I probably went too extreme in there as we can see. So let's maybe try a step two and three based on what we have. Uh, we'll try a four and three. And I think that will actually be pretty good. That, that looks pretty good for small sizes. But now when I go and I start making this grow, you can definitely see that they're all scaling up together. And when we hit that maximum size, they're all gonna stop at the same time. So we get this nice responsive uh, system going. Now, if up until now you've been using viewport units and you never really saw the harm in doing so, it makes sense because how would you know that you shouldn't do that until somebody sees you do it and then tells you not to. It's There's a lot to getting CSS right that sometimes isn't as straightforward as you might hope. And maybe you've been writing it for a little while now and you just feel like you're not getting the most out of it either. And if you'd like to know a little bit more CSS best practices and also ways to sort of unlock it and start writing it with a little bit more confidence, I do have a course that might be really good for you called CSS Demystified, where I go over a lot of the fundamentals that you just don't hear very much about. So things like formatting context, containing blocks, and more that just once you understand how those work, you start really understanding how CSS works and it makes a lot more sense. So if you're interested in that, there is a link just down in the description. And so again, I wouldn't go with these extremes that I've gone with because my font sizes are probably getting a bit too big up here. Uh, so it just gives a good reason not to make that big difference between the type scale here and here, but it gives you nice responsive text that's nice and fluid it works across different viewport sizes without any issues and I think works really well and you can also use their tools here for their space they have a grid they have some other clamp stuff and other things that you can do they can be really really cool and useful and just really fast while we're here they do have some other options I would go with the clamp method here and not the CSS locks it's just a bit cleaner and it gets you the same thing but they also do relative to container queries instead of viewports as well it could be something that's interesting to play around with a little bit there now I don't want to get into container query units right now because the video would drag on a little bit but if it is something that you are interested in well I have talked about it before as well so you can check out this video that is right here for your viewing pleasure with that I would like to thank my enablers of awesome Andrew Philip Simon and Tim as well as all of my patrons and channel members 
for their monthly support. And of course, thank you for watching this video. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.